drive behind me. Need a cameraman. Welcome back to my workshop. I uh, don't post very many of these videos. I, like I've said in the past, I just sprinkle them in here and there. Uh, some people like to see what I'm up to. Uh, it's nighttime, and I've got to do some work on some cabinets that I've been building. Got to prepare them for paint. All of them got to be painted and assembled by the end of the weekend. Just had a bum going right down the alley. I was going through all my sandpaper, and I was like, oh, this is used, this is used. So I go out there, and it's pitch black. And right when I get to my trash can, my spotlights kick on, and literally light up a bum, boom, right in front of me. We both got startled. I mean, they're not out to cause too much trouble, but you, you, know, you never know. They don't have much to lose, so I think I'm going with a full new system. And they know that when they get to my house, they're going to get lit up, but I want them to really get lit up. So I'm actually going to install um, poles, poles attached to the back side so that the lights are 15 feet high in the air. Right now my, my LED Sansi lights, some of you actually got to see that video. I have since made it private because it showed a little bit too much of, of my, my local area. But right now it's at soffit height on that room and it's about this high. They could easily, and that building, or that side of the building is literally this far from my chain link fence. So they could easily get to it or, or poke a stick at it or something. Kind of a big tangent there. Back to cabinet finishing. Most of you are probably looking at this cabinet door here and saying, well, that's all fine and dandy, but I already have cabinets in my house. I don't like the color. I don't like the species of wood. A lot of these principles carry over. I wonder how many houses were built with these oak cabinets. Yeah, these oak cabinets are what most people have in their house. If you bought a production home, I don't know, any time in the last 25 years, maybe even longer, early 90s, like 1990 till, oh, maybe five, seven years ago, this style of oak cabinet went in everybody's house. And when you go to paint these, you can't just paint. If you see that, this is, it's a very coarse grain and this will all transfer through and you can't sand it out. You can sand and sand and sand, but you're not going to sand these out. Since we're talking about upgrading our kitchen cabinets without buying all new cabinets, I wanted to show you some upgraded drawer slides that will be going into the base cabinets in this kitchen remodel. You can do this with your existing cabinet. And the place I got them from is cabinetparts.com. I'll put a link in the description. They have an overwhelming amount of cabinet things. Everything you could ever imagine for cabinets is online at cabinetparts.com. I've had this for a little while. Oh, all right. These are the drawer glides. The cabinets that you see in my workshop, they actually came out of a really nice house on a golf course. And this is what you get for your drawer slides. It's just some metal rails with some plastic wheels on it. Now if you were wanting to, to upgrade, because if, especially if you want to improve the value of your house or the sellability of your house, everybody is remodeling and you're going to have to get some nice quality drawer slides. These ones here look mighty different than the ones on there. These are undermounted. I'm gonna have to teach myself how to use these. These things are pretty crazy. It's now if you want to see a video on me trying to figure out how to install these, you're gonna want to click that subscribe button. So they're full, full extension, and they're supposed to be some so, uh, yeah soft close. See how that goes in there like that. That is some fancy stuff right there. These are Blums, but I'll put a link in the description on where these came from, cabinetparts.com. And if I can find the link to these actual ones, I will put that there also. What are you doing? Why are you looking at it? That'd be so funny. Come here. Why are you yelling at that damn camera? It's freaking me out. <laughs> 
So if you want to upgrade your cabinets and you want to get top dollar for your resale or just maintain the equity that you have in the house and not be the ugly house with the oldest kitchen in the neighborhood, you're going to want to upgrade all this stuff. So you got to fill it. Now it's an extremely tedious process. I just picked up this plastic wood filler for my application. This here is poplar. Uh, it's the most common wood used for painted cabinets. This here is MDF, a uh, very smooth surface with no imperfections in it. So my filling is very minimal. I'm just looking for dents and stuff as I've been building and moving these around, scratches, um, smoothing out the seams here. Now if you have these oak cabinets, you can primer, sand, primer, sand, primer, sand, to try to get that sandable primer into those deep grains. Uh, you can use, you could use this wood filler. Um, you're just putting a, a thin a thin layer over it and you're sanding most of it off. You just need to fill that grain or it's going to look like a DIY project where someone just painted some ugly old oak cabinets. And that's not what you want to do. You're going to put a lot of time, a ton of time, in tedious, frustrating time. It's not fun uh, painting production grade oak cabinets. But the results can be really nice if you take the time to fill that grain, primer sand, primer sand, and get a smooth surface like this. It's just your time and minimal material. Um, a lot of people opt to get all new doors and drawer faces made. Uh, that's a bit more expensive. You can, do, you can do that in combination with just painting the frame because you don't see much of the frame. Uh, that's a, a much easier task is to fill and sand just the perimeter. You can do that with them still on the walls. You don't have to take your cabinets down. But I'm going to show you the process of how I prepare this cabinet door and face frame for paint. <laughs> put a little bit of water in here just want to get it a little bit smoother now the next step for me is to remove the door from the door frame take the hinges put those away the screws away and label label the door inside the hinge hole these are the hinges that I've been using this is one of those oak cabinets and it's, it's very similar style. You got the hole, it's the same size hole, the exact same size hole. So you'll have to do pretty much the same thing if you have cabinets made within the last 30 years. I'm gonna get out my contractor grade impact gun. Uh, I do have to be careful. This is a hardwood, but it's one of the softest hardwoods, poplar. Uh, if you've got oak cabinets, you really, you don't have to worry about stripping out the screw holes, uh, although I have seen it happen. Well, that's how I labeled the top hinge pocket. And I'll keep that consistent, just labeling the top hinge pocket just for redundancy, even though I write top in the top hinge pocket. Next thing I gotta do is I have to mask off these holes because after several coats of paint, that will reduce the size and the, the hinges will no longer fit in there unless it's, uh, it's taped off. I 
I've got blankets somewhere. Um, I'll sand the back side first and get that prepped. And then I will put down a shipping blanket so that, it, it, I mean, I, there's some glue residue probably on my top. I don't want that scratching or denting, even though it is the back side. So I'll put down a shipping blanket uh, when I prep the front side. I'm going to start with 120 grit sandpaper. This is just to get everything on a smooth surface and see what I'm working with. Then I'll go back with the filler and just do some minor spot treatments, sand that, and then I'm going to have to round over the corners. Not like a, a routered edge round over, just enough so the paint sticks to that corner. If you have a very sharp corner, no matter what type of coating you use, that's the weak point. That's the thin point. That's where you will first start to see any sort of chips is if you have a really tight sharp edge like that that's where you're gonna have your first failure in your paint job so I will kinda of round that over I'm gonna hook my dust collection system up to the sander I have long since lost the bag I used to put a sock over it but now that I've got a uh, what do they call it? A dust devil? Dirt devil? No, not a dirt devil. Dust deputy. Uh, I've got a video out about that. And you know what? It was kind of a... The install on that dust deputy and this whole vacuum system, it wasn't meant to be a permanent install. It was just to see if, if it worked. And you know what? I haven't messed with it. It's still the exact same way as the day I left it at the end of that video. It works, it works great, especially this this tube here, I hook this one up to my sander and I also hook it up to my router. And it's been going going good. A lot of people have asked, do you still use that? Because they don't because I don't post very many workshop videos. So I'm gonna put ear protection on. Yes, the handyman is concerned about his hearing. Put ear protection on, and I'm gonna turn the volume down so that you don't listen to this jet engine, which is my my shop vac. Maybe I'll put some pleasant music to it. thing I'm going to do is a little bit of hand sanding where I can't get the the, uh, the sander and also in areas where this takes off too much like these little corners here I just want to soften that edge again so the paint sticks it has a, a little bit of a radius for it to stick to and I'm also got to soften the inside edge and sand this too So I'm not going to make you suffer through that all again. I'm going to get this one prepped and then we'll move on to the filler. There's not going to be much filler at all, just a few tiny little spots. I wanted to give you an example of what I'm going to be filling. This is probably the most extreme example. Is that tiny little hairline gap there uh, we got it's touching here we got glue squeeze out there there's just a little bit right there now this one here I don't think I'll get anything in there that that line is is mostly made up of glue squeeze out this is another one there's not much there here's one I don't know how the GoPro is gonna pick it up there there's just a few little teeny tiny little spots there so I'll get, these will all get a nice little smear of thinned down 
wood filler. It'll dry very fast. And I'll do the same thing to the other side and do a quick sand again with 120. The reason I'm using 120 is I probably should have gotten a close up is there's just moving this wood around. This wood, uh, before I just sanded it, came from a lumber mill. So there's some scratches and I mean very light scratches in it. But once you paint it, it shows right through. That's one of the, the differences with painted cabinets versus just naturally stained cabinets. You get away with a lot more imperfections when you keep it raw wood or you keep it the natural wood color because it just blends in. It's like camouflage. All the different lines and everything just are so busy that imperfections don't show up. But now you put a uh, a smooth coat of paint, same color everywhere, every tiny imperfection will show. One other area that I'm going to hit up with some filler that will never be seen unless you're on your hands and knees, because these are the upper cabinets, is this end grain here. Like I said, you're never going to see them. Uh, you definitely can't see the top of them. Uh, and the bottom of them, you have to get down and look underneath. But just for some reason, I like seeing a perfect painted piece of wood. I'm going to hit the bottoms up with some wood filler. Uh, the reason I use compressed air is to blow out all the dust so I can see if there is any sort of gap or crack and it's not so it's not filled with sawdust and I think you get the point. See the hobos are back, or a raccoon. Neither of which I really want to run into this hour and night. These things are going to come out amazing. I can't wait to get paint on them this weekend. Now before I paint, I will tack everything off and just give it a final look to make sure that it's perfect. But these are these are ready to go. I also did the frame, uh, the face frame here. The face frame is real, real easy. You don't have to worry about the sides or the back. Uh, you do have to worry about the insides because when you open the door, that'll be visible. Well, I've got a, a bunch more of these to do before I can paint. What day of the week is it? I think it's Wednesday. And I think I want to paint on... I can't keep things straight these days. It'd be nice to paint. Start painting Friday. So I'm not rushed to do all of them. Paint Friday and Saturday. Edit Sunday. And the video should be up on Monday kind of funny when there's no one in here but me and her she thinks I'm talking to her and when I talk to the camera I talk pretty loud <laughs> and she's like what the hell are you yelling at me for I'm not yelling at you don't worry all right let's go chase some squirrels come on 